I'm Mark Cavanaugh for Cavi Coaches, and today I'm going to coach you up on the buoyancy force. So in this video, we're going to talk about the buoyancy force, which is a type of floating force. So floating is a type of equilibrium. So you got a hot air balloon as an example. You also have a, a kid floating on an ear tube also a massive boat floating on the water. These are all types of equilibrium. So Archimedes' principle states that an object that's immersed in a fluid is buoyed up by a force that is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced. I'll say that again. It's the weight of the fluid that's displaced. So the buoyant force is that upward force that's exerted on the submerged or partially submerged object. So if we have this block that's in the water, and as the block sinks to the bottom of the container, the water causes the acceleration to be smaller than g because of the buoyant force acting on the block. But what causes this buoyant force? Well, it is known that the pressure is the same if the depth below the fluid is equal. So we can see we have pressures at the near the bottom of the box on the side, and as we move up, that pressure gets smaller. But on the sides, the pressures are going to cancel each other out because you have one on the left and you have one on the right that are equal at equal depth. So there is no net pressure on the sides of the box that would hinder that block from sinking. So the pressure at the bottom, however, is greater than the top since they're at different depths. So we can see that the, up, the upward pressure on the bottom is greater than the downward pressure on the top, which is what causes that buoyant force. So with a pressure difference between the top and the bottom of the box, we can use this equation. The pressure difference is P bottom minus the pressure on the top. And we can we know that the distance from the top of the fluid at the top of the container to the top of the box, we'll call that H1. And from the fluid to the bottom, we'll call H2. So we can substitute in the pressure equation for just the fluid as the density times G times the height. So for the bottom, it's the density of the water times G times H2. And for the top, it's we're subtracting the density of the water times G times H1. So we can factor out the density of the water in G. And we know that pressure is equal to force divided by area. But we can rearrange this to say force is equal to pressure times area, because we're trying to find a force for the buoyant equation for the buoyant force. So we multiply both sides by the area of the bottom of the container. And we know the difference of H2 and H1 is actually the height of the block. So what we have is the height of the block times the area of the bottom. And we know that the area of the bottom times the pressure difference is a force. So we've got force is equal to the density of the water, G times H of the block times area of the bottom, which H and A give us the volume of the block. So we have an equation for the force that is preventing it from falling in free fall. This force is equal to the density of the water times G times the volume. That volume is the volume of the block, but it's also the volume of the water that's displaced. So rearranging this, this is the buoyant equation, which is the buoyant force is density times volume of the displaced fluid times G. Let's look a little further into the buoyant force equation. So what do each of these terms mean? Well, the buoyant force equals rho v g. The buoyant force exerted on the submerged or partially submerged object is in, measured in newtons. The volume of the displaced liquid, that's in meters cubed. Remember, volume's in meters cubed. The density of the displaced liquid is also kilograms meters cubed. And g is the acceleration due to gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared. Now let's come back to Archimedes' principle, because if you remember, Archimedes' principle says it's the equal to the weight of the fluid that is displaced. So we have this the density of the fluid and the volume of the fluid displaced. Well, we know that density times volume, well, that gives us the mass of the fluid displaced, and m times g is the weight. So the buoyant force is actually just the weight of the fluid that's displaced. So m is the mass of the fluid displaced. So that's why we do the density of the fluid and the volume of the fluid that's displaced times g. So let's look at an example problem. We have a student holds a beach ball underwater, 
and the ball is a radius of r and a mass of m. And we want to write an expression for the force that the student has to hold the ball under the water in terms of m, r, and physical constants. So what we're going to do first is we're going to start with a free body diagram. And we know that on the free body diagram, we've got the ball has some mass, so we're going to have a gravitational force pulling down on it. Now we also have the student who's using his hands to hold it underwater, so we have the force of the hand, which is what the force we're trying to derive an expression for. We have this buoyant force that's pointing upward as well. And the buoyant force is going to be this is longer than each of the hand or the mg because we know that the buoyant force is equal to the two downward forces because the ball's in equilibrium. So the buoyant force can be calculated by doing the density of the water times the volume of the ball, which is the volume of the water displaced, times g, and we can subtract mg to the other side to solve for the force of the hand. But we can't use v in our final expression, so we know that the ball is a sphere that has a volume of 4 thirds pi r cubed. Now remember, this is the volume of the water displaced, which is the volume of the ball. So we can substitute that equation in, and we have the force of the hand is equal to the density of the water times 4 thirds pi r cubed times g minus mg. And we're allowed to use m and r, which we have in our equation, and physical constants, which is the density of water, pi and g, those are our physical constants. So our, our task is done. We found the force of the hand in terms of mr and physical constants, which is the density of the water times 4 thirds pi r cubed g, and then we subtract the weight of the ball, which is m times g. Now what happens if we have a container that has two different liquids in it? So different densities. Well, what's going to happen is the one that has the lesser density is going to flow to the top and eventually the heavier, the more dense fluid is going to sink to the bottom, causing the container to look like this. So we'll define those as row one and row two. Then we're going to submerge a cube in the container such that the cube is the top surface is just at the level of the top of, of the top fluid and it's covered in floating in the bottom fluid. The cube has sides of length L and one fourth of the cube is submerged in the bottom fluid. So we can look at this and see that one fourth L is what is below the surface of the second. Now we can calculate that buoyant force by using our buoyant force equation which is the density of the fluid times g times the volume of the fluid displaced. The problem is, is we have two fluids. So which density do we use? Well, we don't have to choose because the buoyancy force is a combination of both of those. So we're going to use the buoyancy equation twice, once for each fluid. So the density of the top fluid times the volume that's displaced of that top fluid and times g plus the density of the second fluid times g times the volume that's displaced of the second fluid. And we know that the volume of a cube is L cubed, and since it's completely submerged, the volume of the cube is what is displaced inside the container. And we can see that one-fourth of that is below the second fluid, which means three-fourths of it is submerged in the top fluid. So we can calculate that buoyant force by substituting in the value of the volume for each. So we know that L cubed is the total volume of the cube, but only three fourths of that is in the first fluid, and a fourth of that is in this bottom fluid. So that's why we find the values of the volumes three fourths L cubed and one fourth L cubed for V2. Now the buoyancy force. We can factor out the g and the l cubed. Those are in common for both terms, which leaves us as the, the volume of the overall object times g. And then we multiply that by the fraction of the density of the fluid that has that portion of the object in the fluid. So 3 fourths of the cube is in the top fluid, and only a fourth of it is in the bottom fluid. So this would always hold true that we can calculate the buoyant force by taking g times the volume of the object submerged and the fraction of the density of each of the densities of the fluids based on what fraction of the volume is in that container for each fluid. 
So this is the introduction to buoyant force. I hope this was helpful and I hope you have a great day and an even better tomorrow. If you found this video helpful, click the like button down below, subscribe to my channel, Gabby Coaches, and follow me on Instagram and X at Gabby Coaches.